So let's take a look at the basics of resolution. Now I have broken down resolution into two main categories. What I refer to down here as device resolution and image resolution. So device meaning the actual physical screen you're looking at, whether that be a printer or a laptop or a phone and a digital resolution, meaning this is a digital image like a JPEG or something like that. So let's take a look at the device or physical resolution jargon and terms first. So when we're talking about a physical device, we're of course talking about the individual pixels that make up this individual device. So that's a pixel, that's a pixel, that's a pixel, that's a pixel, that's a pixel. And if you count up how many pixels you have from left to right, and then how many pixels you have from top to bottom, you get these numbers. So this is a 24 by 24. In other words, there's 24 pixels horizontally and 24 pixels vertically. So that is the resolution of this particular you know, image, we could say. Now, when we're talking about a physical device, we sort of have a few uh, concepts we need to learn. So if we take this, for example, let's assume we're talking about an iMac and we're wanting to know what's the resolution um, left to right and top to bottom or how many pixels are in this screen. Well, if we zoom in, if we had a magnifying glass or a microscope and we zoomed in on this display, we would see something like this. If we zoom in one step further, we're going to see something like this. And now we're finally getting down to the detail where we can see the individual pixels. And if we zoom in one more time, we're finally going to see something like this. So these little yellow boxes here, so that little yellow box and this little yellow box, those represent individual pixels. Now you can see here that each individual pixel has a green, a red, and a blue sub-pixel, but the overall pixel has to have those three colors. So that's the smallest, essentially, unit, the pixel stands for picture element, that this device can have. So if I were to just count all of these pixels left to right and top to bottom, that would tell me the actual physical resolution of this device in pixel number counts. So I'd have some crazy high number, right? Like, I don't know, 20,000 by something. Now, if we sort of take this and we look at the physical devices that are common out there, we kind of have a few main categories. So where it gets confusing is the jargon or the terms that the industry uses to talk about resolution are different depending on the type of device. So for TVs, we typically have, we don't use numbers often, we just will say like DVD quality or HD quality or full HD quality, 4K, 8K. So we have kind of some different terms that refer to the device resolution. When we're talking about digital cameras, so this would be like a capture device, we typically refer to those resolution numbers as megapixels. So you'll hear something like, oh, my camera is 8 megapixels, or it's 21 megapixels, or it's 3 megapixels. When we're talking about printers, we typically talk about DPI, or dots per inch. So you may hear people talk about the resolution of a printer being 1440 or 2400 or, you know, these different numbers like this. And when we're talking about gadgets, this is your phones, your tablets, and things like this, you typically refer to those in PPI, which is pixels per inch. So you may hear things like, oh, my screen has 72 pixels per inch or has 144 pixels per inch, and they're talking about the resolution of the screen. So this is why it's a bit confusing because depending on the actual device, you use different jargon. So I'm going to go through each one of these so you can kind of understand the basics of these different uh, broad categories. The first of them we're going to talk about is television, so TVs. Now I should note here that this depends on uh, your unit of measure, your country. Often different countries will have different sort of standards, but this assumes kind of an empirical standard. So uh, 480 here, this number down here is the resolution of actually a DVD. Um, I'm actually not going to write that out there, but that's the resolution of a DVD. So this technology, 480p, means that there are, if we go upwards, there's 480 pixels on the uh, vertical axis. Okay, so if you were to take your TV like this TV and you were to count how many pixels were all the way from the top to the bottom, if you came up with the number 480, that means you're using a 480p TV. These were TVs that are common as the CRT or the old sort of the TVs that are like furniture, right? That are really long. They're not the flat screen ones. They were typically in this sort of resolution. Next up from that, we have what we call 720. So if you were to count each individual pixel, again, moving on the vertical axis, and you came up with the number 720, that means your screen has a resolution of HD or 720p. Again, one more time, if you counted all the way up and you came up with the number 1080, 
that means your screen is considered full HD and that's how many pixels are on again the vertical axis now things got really confusing when 4k came out because we always had this nice standard of counting the vertical pixels to come up with the resolution number for a TV so 1080 is considered full HD and that's the resolution like of a uh, blu-ray disc or something like that then out came the 4k resolutions which we call ultra high definition but notice that this number right here, the first number we've been looking at, refers to the horizontal resolution. So in a 4K display, if I were to count, again, the resolution all the way up on the vertical axis, I would come up with number 2160. So we should call this a 2K display, but the marketers got really creative and decided 2K wasn't fancy enough, so they started calling these 4K. In other words, they switched and are now referring to the resolution this way. So this is along the horizontal axis. So 4K, meaning there's roughly 4,000 pixels, 3840 along the horizontal axis. And if we go up to the 8K, there's roughly 8,000 pixels. So up until 4K, it was always this way. And now for all future, it looks like it's going to be this way. Now, uh, let's take a look. Just one quick note here. Uh, notice that whenever you double, so from 1080 to 4K is essentially a doubling, right? I'm taking my resolution and timesing that by two, and that's where I get that 2160. But when you double the resolution, so when I go from this to this, I actually quadruple the amount of pixels because, you know, there's this quadrant down here, there's this quadrant up here, and there's this quadrant over here. Right, so you're quadrupling the amount of pixels. That's the reason why 4K has been out for quite some time, but we still don't have a lot of content coming across the television or across the internet that's in 4K because it takes a lot, lot more bandwidth to push that many more pixels. And the same thing for 8K. So while 1080 has been out for, I don't know, 10, 12 years now, uh, we still, that's still the standard for broadcast television. All right, next we're going to talk about digital cameras. So digital cameras are, of course, a capture device. And when we're referring to the resolution of a digital camera, we're referring to the resolution of the sensor. So this is a CMOS, CMOS sensor on a digital camera. So if you were to kind of take off the lens and peer into a camera, you would see something like this. So this uh, is kind of the same thing. We're referring to how many physical pixels, individual dots, right? If we were to kind of dot these guys out, that this camera can capture. So when we're doing that, we typically talk about that in the term of megapixel. So megapixel is nothing more than uh, 1 million pixels is 1 megapixels. Okay. So the formula here is you take the width pixels times the height pixels and you divide by 1 million. So if I have a sensor, you know, that's kind of a square sensor like this, I would count all the dots down this way, count all the dots over this way times those by two, divide by, or times those together, divide by a million, and that tells you how many megapixels that sensor can capture. So, in this little sample we used before, again, this one had the resolution of 24 across and 24 down. So if we do 24 times 24, that gives us 576, we divide that by a million. So the megapixel count, if this was a digital camera sensor, would be 0 0.005 megapixels. And that's obviously super, super small. So in a more traditional image, something like this, this resolution is 1920 by 1280 for this little image right here. And if we did the same math here, this comes out to 2.45 megapixels. So megapixels are a number that typically you'll see when you're talking about digital camera resolution. So for common, just to give you a couple of ideas, for common cell phone cameras, the front facing cameras in today in the year 2020 are around 8, 9, 12 megapixels. The back facing cameras are sometimes 12, 13, 15. If you bump up into more professional cameras like the DSLRs, uh, those can be anywhere from 10 to 50 megapixels. You can buy a professional full frame sensors that can go all the way up to 50 megapixels, which is just huge amount of pixels that are being captured. So that's kind of just a couple of numbers to throw out there. So. That is kind of all we need to know about image capturing and how we talk about megapixels. Next, let's talk about printers. So printers, again, are another physical device. Um, they, however, do not have squares for pixels like most screen devices have. 
when they print, they print with circles. So when a printer lays down ink, ink is sprayed. This is an actual magnification of an actual inkjet printer. They spray down droplets of ink. And so all of these are droplets of the different colors, the cyan, magenta, yellow, and black in an inkjet printer. So when we talk about printing, we're typically talking about a number, which is DPI, or dots per inch. So this over here on the right is just the physical, or not a physical, rather a digital representation of what a printer might do, and just a ruler here. So if we were to count this, right, here's one inch. If we were to count how many dots this printer can spray down, that gives us the resolution of the printer. Now printers can go much, much higher than physical devices because we can spray droplets through through uh, grading techniques through pressure and get teeny teeny tiny droplets so that's why when you hear printer resolution you'll hear numbers clear up into the two three thousand dots per inch that a printer is able to print super super high fine resolution uh, much higher than any physical light emitting screen can reproduce Okay, last here is our phones, tablets, and gadgets. Now, a phone and tablet, the tricky thing here, why they have, again, a different sort of set of jargon is because they don't really have a standard orientation nor aspect ratio. So phones can be horizontal, uh, they can be vertical. So this would, we, we, we would term this a um, portrait mode. We would term this landscape mode, depending on how the device is oriented. Another problem with these is devices have all sorts of different aspect ratios. So, you know, some devices are more square, some are more tall and skinny, and kind of everything in between. This graphic right here is actually just the different sizes of common Apple laptops. So you can see they come in all sorts of different sizes. So when we refer to the resolution of like these gadgets, we typically are talking about PPI, which stands for pixels per inch, very similar to the uh, printer where we have dots per inch. So a typical screen resolution is 72 dots per inch. And this is going to become a very important number as you work through digital image creation, 72 dots per inch, because this is a standard in what we call screen resolution. So it's just something that is based off. Now, another sort of standard or number is what we call 300. And that is simply what we refer to as print resolution often. Uh, so the general idea is that if we're going to be printing things, we should have a resolution of at least around 200 to 300. If it's going to be viewed on screen, 72 pixels per inch is, is the standard for that. So when you get a new smartphone, you'll often hear numbers of, oh, my, my new iPhone has a screen resolution of 400 PPI or 400 resolution. They're talking about how many physical pixels per inch that that actual screen has. So different manufacturers have different terms for this. Uh, Apple's sort of moniker is they call it a retina display, meaning there's so many pixels per inch that your eye can't even distinguish them and et cetera, et cetera. So for cell phones these days with high density displays, uh, typically the range is anywhere from 200 to up to 500 pixels per inch for different uh, phones and tablets and whatnot. As the screen gets bigger, that typically goes down. So for laptops, you see numbers in the 100 to 200 range typically and same thing for like desktops these days for high density displays all right now the last piece we're going to look at here is the resolution of a digital asset so here i am inside adobe photoshop and i've just got an image loaded here if you go to the image image size command you will see the resolution of this image so this is telling me i'm going to uncheck the resample you typically only want to resample if you are uh, shrinking things down. You don't want to resample if you're upscaling or going larger because then you'll Photoshop has to guess at the number of pixels. So here I have a width of 6.4 and a height of 4.2. So if I change this resolution down to 72, notice that the width and the height simply go way up because there's much, um, I'm taking those pixels and distributing them in a much more general manner, right? It's 72 to 300. Same thing if I go down to, if I go clear up to 500 pixels per inch, of course, my width and height goes way down because I'm cramming those pixels into a tighter and tighter space. So the resolution number here really doesn't mean a whole lot if resample is unchecked. It's just simply uh, an arbitrary metric. How many pixels do I decide I'm going to cram into one inch of space? 72, 300, 500, 2, it really doesn't matter. So the resolution of the image is kind of uh, pointless 
unless you start to resample things. Right? So if I set this to 72 and hit OK, notice nothing changes. If I go back here and say image, image size, and I set this back to 400 and hit OK, nothing changes, right? So the only thing that changes is my ruler. So if I turn on my rulers, and it looks like I've actually got my ruler set to pixels, so I can go to Photoshop Preferences and say Units down here, Grids. Whoops, I clicked on the wrong one. Units and Rulers, and I want to set my rulers to inches and hit OK. So the only thing that's changing, right, is my unit up here. So watch what happens to this scale. So right now you can see there's the scale. If I go to image, image size, and I take this resolution back to 72 and hit OK. Notice how that scale changed because now the ruler is 27 inches. So that's how you can find out the resolution of your physical asset. Just go to the image size. If you want to change the resolution, that's when you check the resample button. So definitely this behaves differently when I check resample because now if I go to 300 pixels per inch and I resample, what I'm telling Photoshop is you used to have 72 pixels per inch, now you have 300, so you have to create those extra pixels. So now when I hit OK, this image is going to get much, much larger. You'll see Photoshop's taking a second to recalculate. And now this is the new image. So it's way, way, way bigger. So Photoshop created a much larger document. I have to zoom way out to see how it used to look. But that's not a good thing because Photoshop had to invent data that was never there in the past. So it had to go in and create all these extra pixels that didn't even exist. So it kind of had to do some guessing through a bunch of fancy math and algorithms. So I'm going to undo that. Again, resampling is not something that you want to do. Uh, when you're saving your digital assets, for working on devices, you need to pay attention to your resolution number. So whenever you're outputting to a screen, typically you want to output your res your images to screen resolution, which is 72 pixels per inch. But if I'm going to be outputting this image to a print, I want to output at 300 pixels per inch because the printer obviously can support much higher resolutions. So I need to have a higher resolution image. So when we talk about resolution of an image, we're typically talking about the physical size, the width, height, and the actual pixels per inch. And of course, all of these things determine file size. So when you're talking about images, you'll hear common things like megabytes. This is a two megabyte image. This is a three megabyte image. The more physical pixels from left to right and top to bottom there are, the higher the megabytes um, will be in the image. So when you're saving things on the web, you don't want them to download a long time. Then you need to pay attention to your uh, width and height values in your megabytes so that they download much quicker. All right, we will see you in the next one.